Hey everybody, it's Jim here. Today we have four different offset guitars that were made in four different countries. We have a Squire Jazzmaster that was made in Indonesia, a Fender Mustang that was made in Mexico, a Fender Jaguar that was made in Japan, and another Fender Jazzmaster that was made in the USA. I'm going to be giving you my experiences, some pros and cons with each one, and also at the end I'll be sharing which I believe is the best value of the four. <laughs> start off with the Squire. This is the 40th anniversary vintage edition Jazz Master. Right now they range from anywhere to three to five hundred dollars based on what promotions are going on at the moment and where you do your shopping for guitars. You do get some good things when it comes to this instrument, mainly being the feel of the neck itself. Unlike traditional classic vibe Squires, this does not have a really, really thick poly sticky finish on the back you have a very smooth feeling neck on top of that you do have modern appointments on this guitar both in the fret size and in the radius so if you're somebody who's not familiar or not really comfortable with playing the vintage seven and a quarter inch radius found on many other guitars that you're going to see in this video this has the nine and a half inch radius on it so that's a big plus if that's your thing and the final thing I'd really like to highlight as a positive on this guitar, outside of the price, because you have to keep in mind, these are by far the most affordable guitars that we're going to be talking about in today's video, are the pickups. Believe it or not, I think that they sound really, really good. They punch well above their weight. Are there going to be uh, perhaps better vintage style alternatives? Definitely, but for a kind of a modern sound, I feel like they match this guitar really well and they're not something that I would say I would want to rush out and immediately replace. And now on to some of the things that I don't really like that much about this instrument, starting off with the remainder of the electronics outside of the pickups themselves. The three-way toggle switch, the volume pot, and the tone pot, they're all pretty low quality budget tier stuff good news is you can easily replace it with high quality stuff for not a lot of money and even less money if you're decent with a soldering iron and it wouldn't even take it that long to do so and if you're somebody who does have one of these guitars I consider that to be a worthy upgrade. And that leads me to the hardware. And things can get a little bit dicey here because that value proposition I was talking about earlier in regards to these guitars could fly out the window if you choose to replace the vibrato unit in the bridge and you go with really high end aftermarket parts. I don't love the stock vibrato for a few reasons on this. First of all, it just doesn't feel great. In practice, it just doesn't. There are ways you could modify this. Some people really get their hands dirty and have a field day sanding things down, replacing springs and all of that. And if that's something that you're into, more power to you. For me, I would rather just have something I really liked and also have something that has the lock feature because I actually find that quite useful on vintage spec Fender vibrato systems already on it and just call it a day. And the final thing I don't love about this this specific guitar might not apply to you if you purchase one of these instruments, and that is the fretwork. I've heard varying reports of people saying they had no problems with theirs, and the frets were fairly level, and the edges were pretty smooth. That could not be further from the experience that I've had with this guitar, and similarly with a 40th anniversary vintage edition Telecaster that I had previously. <laughs> Thank you. 
Vintera 2 Mustang, really, really solid guitar. Fretwork on this one was substantially better than either of the 40th Anniversary Squires, both in how level the frets were, as well as how smooth the fret edges are. So right out of the box, in that sense, we had a big plus in my book, as well as the fact that I feel like compared to my 1975 Vintage Fender Mustang, the neck feels really similar. Outside of that, Pickups, again, huge plus. They're bright, they're crisp, they're clear. If it's a little bit overbearing for you, always remember, you do have a tone knob. I am amazed to find out how many people never use theirs. Make use of it, and you might find yourself not wanting to purchase a set of aftermarket pickups and happy with what you have. Outside of that, this dynamic vibrato is pretty decent. The only problems I had with this guitar out of the box was it really, really needed a setup compared to some of the other guitars that we're going to be talking about later in this video this was one that needed probably the most work into it outside of the aforementioned squire that we just went over outside of the fact that this guitar desperately needed a proper setup out of the box to get it to a state where i was happy playing it i have nothing else to complain about comes with a pretty decent gig bag stays in tune really well the neck feel is great it sounds really good high quality components as far as the capacitors and the switches not much more you can ask for. And if you're into a vintage style of Fender Mustang, this is the only vintage style option that you have new in the United States of America. This is where things start to get really interesting because these guitars are not available new in the United States. This is a 2023 Fender Special Run traditional 60s Jaguar. It is outrageously good. The neck on this is phenomenal. The fretwork might be the best of the four. You know, it is the best of the four out of the box. And on top of that, this has the vintage radius on it. It's based off of a 1965 version of a Jaguar, but it does have a few modern tweaks. This has medium jumbo frets and a Mustang bridge as opposed to the threaded vintage style bridge. It also comes with the Japanese vibrato system. Out of the box, this was by far the best setup of the four guitars. I was ready to start playing and having no problems in it to adjust anything right away. Fender Japan have a great reputation with their craftsmanship, their quality control, as well as their playability right out of the box. It's very obvious they really care about the little details. However, in older Japanese made Fenders, there was one part of the guitar that there may have been a little bit of a compromise with, and those are the electric components used to get these baby mini alpha pots and less than ideal switches nowadays however things have changed you get CTS for your pots and switchcraft for your components so right out of the gate you are set and ready to go now if I'm gushing over this guitar a little bit too much I apologize there is one major con well actually two cons to this guitar the first is this comes with the worst gig bag out of any Fender guitar that comes with a gig bag. It might as well not come with a gig bag. It's pretty terrible. And this is a beautiful instrument like many of the Japanese Fenders. So if you're going to purchase one of these guitars, if it doesn't already come with an upgraded hard shell case or a better gig bag, price that into the equation. The second thing is something I alluded to earlier. They're not easy to get new in America. You're gonna have to go directly to Japan in order one sight unseen to be able to take advantage unless you want to pay a reseller a premium to do so that already has the guitar in the United States.
Last but not least, we have the American Vintage 2 66 Jazz Master. You do get seven and a quarter inch radius on it with vintage tall fret wire. The neck on this guitar can get a little bit sticky because it's a nitro finish. And this is the only guitar of the four today that has a nitro finish. You have poly on the Ventera, poly on the Jaguar, and a satin finish on the Squire 40th Anniversary Jazzmaster. Potential cons, they're really two or three that I can think of. The first is all preference. Some people hate the vintage bridge. I don't mind it. When you understand how to set this thing up and you're not using nine or eight gauge strings, it will work just fine. The other thing is the price. This is by far the most expensive of the four guitars. However, you consider all of the other details that go into it. It's an American made instrument. It does come with a hard shell case. You are getting a nitro finish. To some people that matters. Does it matter to you? Maybe, maybe not. I can't speak for you, but all of these things do contribute to the cost. I would consider if you are looking at one of these guitars, Play it in person if you can, and if you find one that you love, I wouldn't really hesitate if you can afford to do so and you are in the market. If you don't want to do that and you're somebody that does purchase online, that's why I love places like Sweetwater because you can always have a great return policy. You can see the exact guitar you are getting as well as know exactly how much it weighs before it ever shows up at your house. Before I give you my opinion on which of the four I consider to be the best value, I think it's worth acknowledging we have it pretty good as guitar players right now. From lower end budgets like that Squire 40th Anniversary Jazzmaster all the way up to the American Vintage 2, there's something for everybody and the quality of product has definitely improved along the way and unfortunately the prices have started to go this way along side with it. So value is something that I hold pretty deeply in my considerations whenever I'm looking at an instrument. My favorite guitar value wise out of the four, not going to surprise many of you who follow this channel, but it's this one. It's the Japanese Fender Jaguar. Out of the box, ready to go. High quality components. The thing plays great. It sounds great. I just wish that they were available new to purchase here in the United States. The consistency, and this is somebody who has had hundreds of Japanese Fender guitars in my life, buying and selling them and having them for my own personal usages. They're just great. They really do hit the little things that make a big difference and they're not going to break the bank if you're able to purchase one new from Japan. But the caveat is, you have to be willing to take a risk or spend more, like I said earlier, buying from a reseller here in the USA or in Europe, depending on where you are. That's all I have for today's video. If you found this helpful, useful, and or entertaining, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. Out of these four, which one would you pick and why? Do you own any of them? I always love hearing what you guys have to say in the comments section down below. Don't forget to tell somebody in your life that you love, that you do love them. Take it easy and have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care, everybody.